What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at again with another Giants video. Got a just general update on minicamp, the ongoings of the mandatory minicamp today. There was a press conference after with Thomas McGahey and Patrick Graham. I'm sure Judge is also going to speak to the press as well. This is obviously ongoing as we speak. It goes on throughout the entire day. And in addition to that, uh, Burton Burns was back at practice, you know, thankfully for those of you that don't know, Burton Burns, our very old running back coach, I think he's like in his 70s or 80s or something, he uh, collapsed yesterday on the field because of the 90 degree heat, uh, heat exhaustion, um, he had to be carted off of the field, he seems to be fine today, he was on the field training and practicing with the running backs doing his job, so, you know, thank God that Burton Burns is doing just fine. And also the heat around MetLife today is not as oppressive as it was yesterday. Before I get into the quotes, a couple of them from McGahee and a couple of them from Graham though. Uh, big news, well depending on how you consider it, it could be big news. But it's confirmed now that the Giants will have two practices with the Browns right before their Browns game in the preseason. Now then, um, why would some people consider this big news? Well because the Giants and Browns kind of have a rivalry right now. Um, and it's a weird rivalry because it's kind of started from both teams building off each other with the trades back in uh, the offseason of 2019, obviously. The Odell Beckham trade, we sent Odell to the Browns, the Browns sent us the first round pick, that turned into Dexter Lawrence, they sent us a third round pick, that turned into O'Shane Zimenez, we sent them, uh, who was it, uh, Olivier Vernon and they sent us Kevin Zeitler, and ever since... In my opinion, the Odell Beckham trade looks like it's worked out more and more for us than it has for the Browns. Then again, the Browns, like outside of that Odell trade, has just, they've just built a really good team over there um, with their GM and their coach and whatnot. They're looking to go places. And, you know, there's been a little bit of a rivalry between the two players, um, the players of two teams. Of course, we also got Jabril Peppers from there, and Peppers seems uh, very happy being with the Giants, and he's very vocal whenever um, we play the Browns, like last year he was. But it's going to be interesting to see how these practices go, because I think we all know by now that none of our starters are going to play in the preseason. They don't have a reason to play in the preseason. I think the Browns game, it's like the second preseason game or something like that. And the starters typically only play the first quarter of the first preseason game. So we're not going to see the starters at all. Um, if we do, I'd be very surprised. You know, you talk about injury risk and whatnot. Uh, but the those practices, I'll be interested to see what happens during the practices. I want to see, for example, how the Browns wide receiving core does against the vastly improved Giants secondary. Along with the Browns really good offensive line against our interior defensive line and our improved outside linebacking core. That's going to be a really good test for both teams. And then now moving on to what our two coaches have to say, Thomas McGay, special teams coordinator. He spent a little bit of time talking about the return game. Of course, a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, Kadarius Tony, our first round pick, was spotted both yesterday and today working with the punt return team, the punt return squad, and doing those in general. Now, we all know Tony is probably the most explosive player we currently have on the team. Of course, this is only basing off of what he did in college. Um, a, a healthy Saquon Barkley, in my opinion. I think in everybody's opinion, is definitely number one. But obviously, Saquon isn't healthy right now. He's still on the road to recovery, which um, quickly, if I can speak on that, the, that seems to be going well as well. I know people are kind of concerned, is Saquon on the right track? People are concerned whether or not he's going to get 100% of snaps week one. I'll just say this, and I've said it before. We've only heard good things about his recovery so far, both from coaches, both from Joe Judge, both from the training staff, from Saquon himself. We haven't heard anything bad about his road to recovery. He seems to be on track and on a nice pace. As for how many snaps he's going to get week one, that really does not matter. It, what matters is that he's 100% healthy when we need him to be 100% healthy. And then now from McGay, he's specifically on Tony. He said that he's electric and he can do some things. He just has to get acclimated. He needs to gain the trust of his teammates and he that being a punt returner in the NFL is a big responsibility. He also said that Tony has a unique traits as a returner, but he needs to learn how to be a pro. Um, and this is uh, obviously quotes I'm gonna throw up on the screen with you guys. It sounds like Tony will be a punt return option. And of course, Jabril Peppers, I'm pretty sure, was our starting punt returner last year. And he's also confirmed to remain a punt return option for the Giants. 
And don't be surprised, um, this is how Kadarius is going to work his way through the NFL. He's going to start up through special teams. I don't think he's going to spend a very long time in special teams, um, you know, but he's going to get his game going there first before they start to work him into the offense. I would be a little surprised if right away week one he's a starter, um, you know, at wide receiver, but I wouldn't be surprised. If say, I don't know, eight, nine weeks into the season is when he really starts seeing most of his snaps. That being said, is just whole Kadarius Tony thing is just gonna be very interesting to keep an eye on. Um, we wanna see how he develops and where they use him a lot in his rookie year because right now it's just kind of an unclear thing. In addition to talking about Tony McGay, he said that Riley Dixon, our punter, who had an up and down gear last year, is working on his fundamentals and getting his base right because of the inconsistencies. I expect Riley Dixon to have a bounce back year. Um, I'm not sure whether or not we're gonna keep him past this season because for a punter, I think he's you know he's getting he's getting paid a good amount. You know, as a regular football player, it's it's kind of not that much, but as a punter, he is taking up a little bit more than you'd want. But uh, Riley Dixon, when consistent is one of the best punters in the NFL, so I expect him to have a nice bounce back. And then now going over to our defensive coordinator and Patrick Graham, he first started off with saying that you want to be able to play man coverage in this league, of course referencing the fact that the Giants in terms of quantity have one of the deeper secondaries in the league. And then also in terms of quality, one of the better secondaries in the league. They're, they're really hitting both of the boxes here and it's gonna be fun to see who they keep around from that secondary with the new expanded roster. It is only two more spots, 55 man roster instead of the regular 53 man roster. But that, I think both of those spots might go to the secondary. We have a lot of people back there and it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how Graham uses them as well. He made a point in saying that we can't go wrong with a lot of talented defensive backs and you want to be able to play man coverage on third down. Of course, the additions this offseason kind of reflect that. Both of the defensive backs we drafted are more man coverage guys than they are, say, the zone that Graham ran this past season. And the Dory Jackson as well. Graham also spoke on Afidi Odenigbo, I think one of our underrated signings of this uh, offseason. Already somebody that not much Giants fans kind of remember. Wearing number 44, by the way. The last person that wore number 44 for the Giants got 10 sacks. Come on, Afidi. I'm not saying get 10 sacks. What I'm saying is uh, I got I got good hopes for you, man. I, I really do. I feel like Afidi could be a really good player for this team. Oh, man. I'm just I'm really excited to see him play. and be honest with you guys. I really think he could play that edge, that outside linebacker spot, and he could move him in to D-tackle if need be. Of course, 3-4 D-end, D-tackle, same thing. You guys know what I mean. But this is what Graham said about Afidi. He says he's a very learned player guy outside the football plays with versatility has natural pass rush strong with hands physical edge setter good football player i like him i mean obviously he's not going to say anything bad but the things that i really liked about what graham said really came and was specific towards rushing the passer strong with your hands talking about being a physical edge talking about how natural he is I am just excited to see Afidi Odenigbo get on the field. I really want to see that 44 flying again. And man, like I said now, that 44 because of the past, you know, um, that 2019 season, Afidi, you got a little bit to live up to. I know Marcus Golden was only with us for a short time, but he did good things in that short time. And then finally, the quote that everybody loved, including myself, which got me really happy about Patrick Graham on this team, was when he said the Giants uh, defensive coordinator job is his dream job. It was him specifically talking about turning down head coaching job interviews. And he, the exact quote is, this is my dream job here as a defensive coordinator of the New York Giants. And he says he doesn't want to focus on the future of maybe being a head coach. When he wants to focus right now is the current, the present, developing these players with Judge and making something special here in New York with that defense. And I know that makes all of you happy. It makes me happy. I hope he truly does mean it and I hope he stays the defensive coordinator of the Giants for as long as he can because he is definitely somebody that, that um, should get consideration in the future for a head coaching spot. But that's what I got for y'all today. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.